time for the virtual national. And this year, the club have decided to hold a baking competition to win a great hamper of goodies. And I have been asked to set the baking challenge because I was on Bake Off, of course. We're all going to make the same basic cake, so I've set the recipe for that, and here's mine. Nice Madeira sponge. But how you decorate it is entirely up to you, but we want a national theme, okay? And it enters in before midnight on the 23rd of May, and then I'll be judging the entries and deciding which one um, will win the hump. So, aprons on, get baking, and good luck. Hi everyone, I'm in my um, my studio, aka conservatory. I'm working on my uh, ideas for the national cake. Yeah, the thing is, I'm, I'm nowhere near ready to make the actual sponge cake yet, but I can get on with my sugar work because it goes it goes hard, it stays good and it's another job out of the way. So I was thinking about the theme for my topper, because it's the National Rally Cake Topper Challenge competition. And I thought, well, what what sums it up to me? And it, what for me, it's a sort of colourful, joyous summer occasion and um, like a festival, really, type of vibe. So I've gone with that. So I'm working on, um, I'll let you see. See, I've got all sorts of tackle I want here. But this is some flowers, various colours, and you might have spotted this isn't the actual one. I'm going this is just a, a tryout of a, of a van. Courtesy actually of Swift. They gave they gave me these like cardboard templates last year um, at the NEC and it's coming handy. So that's sort of that going on. Uh, so our butterflies as well. It's very um, flower power at the moment. And I've got a blue. It's a special request for a, a certain someone. We need blue on this cake. So I've got a nice blue flag. And I've got the bunting. Can you see? I won't pick it up. Well, I'll, I'll try to get one. Two pieces. So I'm making my triangles painting them so it's a really nice thing to be doing this morning so I'm getting all this stuff done and I'm making a barbie because obviously there's a barbie isn't there so this is it it's like a, this one's like a kettle drum I've got legs I've got a little lid as well and I've got if it works out I've got a little grill and some tiny sausages and burgers to go on it so that's exciting me so that was my sort of first stage and then i'm going to video another one where i've got plans to use gingerbread on the top of the cake because we're all making the same cake it's just what we do with the design and the theme that um that we're looking at I'm getting excited about so i better get back to it um I made a mess, got all my things out, but it's really nice and relaxing, natural fact. So, um, see you later. Bye. I've been working on my national cake topper again um, today. I've been finishing off the sugar decorations that I did yesterday. I've given them another coat of paint to make them really vibrant. And also, I've given them a bit of, well, a spit and polish in the... <laughs> I've used edible confectioner's glaze and it's really great and it makes them obviously very shiny and beautiful. So let's just have a little look at the decorations here. I've put them on the cake bar. The green cake bar is what I'm going to build the whole national cake on. Um, and it gives me an idea of how my colour scheme is working out. So what have we got? We've got some, obviously some lovely pretty flowers, various colours. We've got some butterflies. Uh, two sizes with some tiny ones as well. We've got bunting and we've got a blue flag for a certain someone and a rug and this little Barbie, <laughs> cute, it's got sugar 
coal and I've got some grid that I made with raw icing there and sausages and burgers and the lid goes on like that and then um, yeah it's all working out um, quite well so that's the sugar work I've done next up for my national uh, cake topper is my gingerbread um, details so maybe I'll work on that tomorrow we'll see so I've been working on my national topper cake again so these are what we finished already my lovely sort of colour the colourful elements so I wanted to bring a different sort of thing into the whole bake so I've used some gingerbread think gingerbread house or gingerbread men stuff um, so I've made a large facade really of hold it up you can see hopefully you can see I've got some stained glass windows yeah that's glacier fruits and they melt in the oven and looks very effective because like the national always has a fancy sort of location so that's that and these are going to have flags on hopefully if I can get them to balance on there so going back down we've got also it wouldn't be right if we didn't have some vehicles so we've got some um, little caravans down here two sizes and some uh, cute motorhomes and I got this I got the cutters off eBay I think really cheap just a few pounds and stamped them out on some sort of piping work so the only thing left to do now I think is another version of this caravan because it's a bit rough it's my prototype I've got a template and um, I've got shop bought cake cheated a bit but that's got a nice curve already so I'll chop that down and I'll I'll um, I'll do that another day I think it's all sort of coming together I've still got to bake the cake of course <laughs> that's the easy bit for me so that's it today's baking day I'm going to actually bake the Madeira sponge for my national cake and I've picked a Madeira recipe because it's more robust compared to say a Victoria sponge because if you do want to carve your cake or model it in any way or, or even, even tear it, um, it will withstand that treatment. So what's the difference? It just has a bit more flour in than, um, than a Victoria sponge ratio wise. So we need a 8 inch or sort of 20 centimetre tin, loose bottom I've got, deep, 4 inches that and lined you can see and that's ready to go so quickly the ingredients so in here I've got 300 grams of soft margarine you can use butter if you want to I've got 300 grams of caster sugar I've got five large eggs beaten up in here and in this bowl I've got 300 grams of self-raising flour and 85 grams of plain that's just so that we don't get I don't want a big dome on the ones that's flat as possible and then just a, a teaspoon or so of vanilla extract and um, I'm ready to rumble eyes down look in so I'm going to beat up the uh, butter on marge very quickly with my electric whisk <laughs> that's fine add the sugar we beat this now until it's sort of light and fluffy because my I've, I've used like um, soft margarine as it's up and because it's so soft it really doesn't take much beating together if you've got butter it might take a bit longer <laughs> there we go and in go the eggs and got the flour ready sometimes when you put the eggs in it sort of curdles a bit so a little bit of flour as you go might stop that so I'm beating it with this just a matter of minutes just gonna put a little spoon of flour in there now just to finish that process off Okay, and then, a bit egg white there, then 
we just need to get the flour in. Now, when I was a girl, my mother used to have me folding flour in with a large metal spoon. And I tend to stick to that. That's so that we don't disturb the gluten in the flour too much, because that way we get dense and heavy cakes. Um, having said that, a Madeira cake is more sort of robust, I think, than um, it's not a delicate sponge, so I think it can perhaps take it. I'm just folding it for figure of eight wise just a bit to get some of that flour through the mixture in the rest. It's quite stiff. If you do find that it's too hard to work with, you can actually put a splash of milk in this. I've forgotten to put, but it doesn't matter when you do this. This is just some vanilla paste. I eyeball that. You can't get in too much of that. So vanilla's in, I'm just going to give it all a quick whiz together. You can use a stand mixer if you have one. Um, I have one, but I do find for this quantity of cake, this works fine. And now we have... Whoop, we have our mixture. And I am going to just clean up the, um, the worktop a little bit and get it into my cake tin. Um, and I'll do another little shot of that in a second. Right, I've cleaned the decks off a little bit and I just need to get my mixture into my greased and lined cake tin. And I'm, I actually am baking this all in the one tin. Obviously, some people might split the mixture into a couple of tins. But I, I did this as a practice earlier. It worked fine. And um, it just needs a long, low sort of temperature bake. So we're going to put this in my oven at 140C. If it was a fan, it would even be 120. So it's quite low. Um, and bake it for a good hour and a half until the cake is lovely and risen, golden. And you can press it with your fingertip and you can feel that it's firm and you can put the old skewer test in so you put a skewer through pull it out and if it's clean it's cooked so just using my spatula now these silicone spatulas are amazing because they can get every every last bit of your mixture out so you know when you were a child and you always wanted to clean the bone up <laughs> there's not much left to to go out really um, but anyway that's in there and now I'm using my offset spatula so I can get right in I coax it to the sides just wiggle it about smooth it down so swivel that around like so now this cake I'm baking in advance of decoration I'm going to freeze it sponge cakes generally do freeze well that means you can get well ahead in your preparation you get the cake done into the freezer I've done some on the toppers already um, and then you're not rushing all at the last minute trying to do everything on one day if you've got a busy life. You can plan it a little bit really. And that's, that's fine. So there we go. That cake is ready to go in my oven and I'll see it later. Moment of truth. So it's baked. I've done all the uh, appropriate tests and uh, everything and I'm convinced it's fine. So I'm going to turn it out of its cake tin. So I'm going to just, I've left it to cool in here just for a few minutes because the cake obviously is quite tender still when it comes out of the oven and I don't want to risk damaging it in any way. So that's the backing paper lifted out. Tin's still quite hot. Um, so this is how I need I knew it. So I'm just going to get hold of this now, hopefully, without any bake-off incidents. Um, it's a little bit awkward to twist, but anyway, there we go. Ta -da! So it's a lovely big cake. I'm going to peel away. So we've got one beautiful flat surface. And obviously a bit of a dome on the other side. I'm going to flip this back now so we can have a good look at it. 
So, there's the cake. Beautiful. So it's deep. It's entirely optional what you do from here on in. You can just decorate it in one piece. You can do what I'm going to do later, which is trim off the dome top so I've got another flat surface. And then I'm going to actually cut it into three cakes and stack it so so my cake's actually going to be quite deep when I put my filling in uh, but that's an option uh, for the national sort of cake challenge <laughs> do what you feel you can so this is going to cool on this rack now and when it's completely cold I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to freeze it um, and come back to it nearer the time that we need to decorate it so brilliant so the first job for me is to take the slightly domed uh, top off my cake and I'm using a, <laughs> it's a lethal weapon but it's it's my special tool for the job and having a, a lazy Susan or a turntable is useful for these jobs. So I'm just going in straight and sort of going around the edges with this. So I want a flat top for my national cake hopefully if it's a bit wonky you can do wonders with a bit of buttercream on ganache <laughs> but that's the idea i'm just taking that crusty top off and then i will be see i've gone through it now up through and lift Ta -da! and then i will be um, splitting the cake into three using the same technique it's optional this you can just decorate your cake in one cake if you want to or split it into two there's no rules it's just what I'm doing so um, I'll show you this when I've done the splitting Bye. so I've done my cake splitting now I've got three fairly even layers of cake and I'm going to build up now using a buttercream to um, stack them. I made this, it's lovely, it's Swiss meringue, caramel and chocolate buttercream. It's quite um, decadent really, um, but I think it's going to make a delicious cake. But you can use jams, curds, ordinary buttercream, you know. Um, there's lots of scope out there, um, so let's see how I get on with this. So national cake topper detail um, is pretty much done, I think. I won't know till the final assembly whether I need to tweak anything or get some more stuff going on. I have got some ideas in reserve. So over here, I've got, do you remember, it's sort of going to be a bit like that, like a fairy castle come stately home location. They do need flags on the flagpoles, that's something I've got to do at the end. And I've got a bag full of caravan and motorhome biscuits that I made, of course. <laughs> da -da 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 -da, on the way. Um, and now over here, let's have a look closer detail. I'll point here. So we've got obviously a caravan. Now I made this by cheating a bit by using shop bought angel cake, covering it fondant and then sort of put my detail on it's not perfect but yeah it's it'll do what it needs to do i think um my favorite thing out of the whole build i think is the barbecue simply because inside this is boiled sweets that are crushed up and um it represents the charcoal <laughs> maybe even speckled it with black thing is nobody will ever know it's there because it gets covered up with the grill and the lid course can go on later um but I, I i like i like to know it's inside i've got this lovely cute i did this this morning cute little cold box to keep the drinks chilled while we sit and lounge on the deck chairs um, to watch the world go by and take it all in we've got a rug for our picnic if we want the book and it's all colour basically, so we've got flowers, we've got the butterflies still here waiting, I did those a while ago, and that's that's pretty much the whole thing, 
Um, I need to get the cake out. I need to frost it, possibly ganache it. I was thinking maybe tree trunk it, make it a tree trunk with this at the top as a almost like a tree house fairy tale setting. I don't know, but um, that's the best part, putting everything together. So, da da. I've made some ganache uh, to cover the cake with. Ganache is simply an, a mixture of cream and chocolate. Uh, equal measures if you're using dark chocolate. And I've just melted them together and I'm pouring them into this bowl. Woo, lovely, look at that. Lovely. Um, to help it set quickly out of the warm pan. And then I'll be able to coat the cake sides on top. With beautiful ganache. There we go. Ganache. Right, so I've got all of my components ready now. Um, so it's just going to be a question of stage by stage assembling it. So I'll just point out what we have. Cake, I have filled it with my chocolate buttercream and I've crumb coated it, sort of like that. And the next step is to use this lovely chocolate ganache all over it and then I have some green buttercream for the top then I've got all the lovely detailed um, decorations here that we've made up earlier I've got a nice cake board to set it on and I've got the fairy tale castle and I have got the motorhomes and the caravans so this is the exciting part this is where I put the whole cake together. Watch this space. So the ganache, I'm just going to be plastering it. I always think it's a bit like plastering a wall. So it's just the right consistency to smooth up and take it all the way around. I'm not being too fussed about the neatness really at this point just get it on the coating and what i'm going to do is put a couple of coats so this will go off as i say in the trade in the fridge and then i'll put some more on um but we smooth it so i'm just going to get right round to the part where it started quick 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 that's it pretty much it and then using a cake scraper, just at a right angle. This is why you need really a lazy Susan if you've got one, if you haven't got a, a turntable proper. Just so that you can smooth it off. And you can see straight away what's happening here. And I'll continue, set it in the fridge and uh, come back and do another coat. So, I've got the ganache on and I suddenly decided it was going to be a tree trunk and our national event is going to take place almost like in a, um, it's a bit fanta <laughs> fantastical this, but a bit like a, um, imagine Jack and the Beanstalk going up and there we find our national event going on. So I've just used a fork to score a bit of bark effect. On my back. and then we're just sticking I might need to add a bit of chocolate just to make sure it sticks so these are our members all on the journey to the national and I'm going to continue and they're going around there and then I'm going to add a few bits of flowers maybe and then we're going to do the actual topper So, as you can see, pretty much done. It's the exact thing I was hoping to, to get. You never know when you're developing ideas. Um, but this is my national cake. I'm simply now just sticking the bunting ribbon round. And I'll give it, I um, can't ever do a cake really these days without giving it some fairy dust. And um, I'm really pleased with it. It's, uh, it's got all the components of the national, I think, here going on. And, um, yeah, 
it's colourful, it's fun, it's lively. So, yeah, that's um, that's me nearly done. I'll give you a final twirl shortly. My national cake is finished. Da -da. There we go. You know, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> So now, um, everybody, it's your turn. I'm setting the challenge. I want to see the results. Get in the kitchen, get baking, get designing your topper, and uh, good luck. Bye. <laughs>